Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you had a nice little break. And as I said earlier, make sure you have like a cup of tea, something warm, a blanket or something because winter is cold this year. So make sure, make sure you guys are sitting nice, warm, snug in front of your TV and posting on the page. Make sure you get chatting to us on the Facebook page. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Guys, it's awesome to always have you on the page. Keep chatting, keep chatting, keep chatting. And guys, I still have to get rid of these. So make sure the more you chat, the more you frequent on the page, the more you have a chance of getting one of these books sent to you. But for now, I'm actually going to hand over to Tamna. Tamna, take it away. Thank you very much. Right, okay, so we have now had a look at the theory. We've had a look at the identities that we use for compound and for double angles. Now let's put a little bit of theory into practice. Okay, we have got an identity over here. We've got 1 minus cos 2 alpha over sine 2 alpha, and they've asked us to prove that that is all equal to tan alpha. Okay, right, let's go ahead and have a look at what we've got here. The first thing I want you to notice is that over there, we have got a cos double angle identity. And down below here, we are sitting with a sine double angle identity. Right, so we've got two double angles that we are going to expand, all right? We are trying to prove that it's equal to tan. Now remember, tan can be written as, so let's take tan away, and let's rather write it as sine alpha over cos alpha, okay? Right, the challenge with a question like this, particularly where we've got a cos double angle, is that we need to use one of three possible identities. Okay, we had a look at the three different ones. We've got to decide which one is going to be the best for me to use. Okay, now the thing is, it doesn't ma it's, it's not going to be wrong to determine which, which one you use. It just depends on which one's going to get you to the answer with least, the least hassle. Okay. So this is my advice. You're going to look at the numerator of, your idea of the left-hand side over here, which is 1 minus 2 alpha. And we're going to look at the right-hand side over here, which is the numerator of just sine alpha. So we can see that we are trying to convert all of that to just sine alpha, which to me would say that of the three cos double angle identities, I'm probably going to use the one that just had sine in it, okay? And the one that just had sine in it, let's just write it over here, it was 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. That was the that was the identity that just had sign in it, okay? So this is what we're going to do. I've got 1 minus, instead of cos 2 alpha, I'm going to fill in here 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha, okay? All right, hope everyone understands what I've done there. So I've chosen that as the identity for my cos double angle. And down below, sine is an easy one because we only have one option, and that is to convert it to 2 sine alpha, cos alpha. Okay. Right, what are we sitting with now? Now that I've filled in this bracket, we've got, if I distribute the negative into our bracket, that's going to give us 1 minus 1. That's nice, that cancels out, so 1 minus 1 is gone. And my negative times my negative has now given me a positive 2 sine squared alpha over 2 and we've got sine alpha cos alpha. Okay, so bearing in mind what we're trying to prove it equal to is sine over cos. Let's not forget that. So we have got now this sine alpha is going to cancel with just one of the signs on the top. Remember it was sine squared alpha. So that bottom sine alpha has cancelled with one of the tops. And nothing is going to cancel with the cos, so that's got to stay where it is. And my twos are going to cancel each other out. So what are we left with? I'm left with sine alpha over cos alpha, which once again is equal to tan alpha. And remember, right in the very beginning, that is what we were asked to prove. So we have now managed to prove that all of this, the whole identity of 1 minus cos 2 alpha over sine 2 alpha, is actually equal to 10. Okay, so grade 12, please listen. When you are doing an identity like this and you've got that cos double angle, 
you are going to take a careful look at what you're actually trying to prove, okay? Because if, like we did here, I could see that in this numerator, there was only sine, okay? So it would be very difficult for us to now go and introduce a cos as well, because I, wanna, I don't want that cos there, okay? So as a result, that was why I decided, or we kind of knew, that we were going to use the 1 minus 2 sine squared, okay? The same thing would go for cos. If you, had, if you were trying to prove something that just had cos in it, then we would be guided towards using the 2 cos squared minus 1 identity, okay? If we have, we're proving a left-hand side equals right-hand side, and the right-hand side had a combination of sines and coses, then we're going to go and use the first one, the cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, okay? Another quick little tip just to bear in mind, if you are doing an identity and you've kind of hit a little bit of a brick wall, you're not getting anywhere, and you've opened all your identities, you've tried as much as you can try. Just remember this as well. It doesn't apply to this particular question, but I'm just going to mention it, okay? If you ever have a 1, a value of 1, okay, that is actually also a very handy value to have because don't forget that 1 can convert to sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. So if you're ever in a bit of a stuck position, you've done as much as you can do and you just can't get anywhere, but you've got a 1 sitting in your sum, remember the possibility of being able to actually take that 1 and expand it and change it into sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. You may just find doing that sorts your problem out. Okay, right. Let's have a look at our other trig examples. Got to find them here. Okay, um, our trig examples are over here. Right. Okay, let's have a look at another example of proving an identity. They're always worthwhile to do because we've always got them in our exams. Okay. Right, we have got sine 3x, and they're asking us to prove that that is equal to 4 sine x times cos squared x minus sine x, okay? All right, another little tip for you. Lots of tips this morning. If you have got one where there's a left-hand side that's quite short, so you've got quite a little left-hand side, and we've got quite a large right-hand side, okay? Generally, it's going to make your life a lot easier to convert or to expand the shorter side. So don't work with that side over there. Don't try and make that look like sine 3x. It's going to be much easier for you to actually work the other way around and take sine 3x and expand it. Okay, so what have we got here? Sine 3x. Now, that I could see, if I've got 3x, does everyone agree we could expand that to 1x plus 2x? Okay, so what we've done is we've made a compound angle out of it. Okay, so with that, we're going to have to use our compound angle formula. And for sine, it's going to look like this. We're going to say sine x cos 2x. Remember, s for sine and s for stays the same. And then I'm going to have cos x and sine 2x. Okay, so we can already see how this little side is not so little anymore. We've managed to expand it already to start looking quite, quite big. All right, so what have we got here? Over here, I can now see I have got a double angle. And again, we're going to have to decide which one of the three identities we're going to use. And over here, again, we've got a double angle. That one we don't have to choose. We only have one option. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're going to do here. I have got cos 2 theta. Now, looking at what I'm trying to prove on the right-hand side, I, the way I can see it, there's a combination of sines and coses over there. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the identity of cos squared theta minus sine squared theta for my cos 2. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm saying a theta, it should be x, okay? All right, so therefore, we've got sine x, and in a bracket, please make sure it's in a bracket because it's being multiplied, we have got cos squared x minus sine squared x. I then have got plus cos x. And sine 2x we know is 2 sine 
x cos x. And again, that's in a bracket because it is being multiplied, okay? Right, let's do a little bit of distribution. Let's take this sine and let's distribute it into the first bracket. That's going to give me sine x and cos squared x, all as one term. If I distribute sine into sine squared x, we're going to land up with negative sine cubed x. And if I distribute my cos into this bracket over here, I have got a 2, and I have got cos uh, squared x, and I've also got a sine x. Okay. What I would also really suggest at this point is take a moment and go back to what they're asking you to prove. Let's just double check what we're actually wanting the number to look like. We are wanting a 4. We're wanting a cos squared x, and then we're wanting sine x at the back over here. Okay, so we're looking for a cos squared x. We want that. Do we have any like terms over here? I've got a sine x cos squared x, and I've got a 2 cos squared x sine x. So in fact, yes, I do have like terms. This one over here and that one over there are like terms. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that as 3 cos squared x sine x minus sine cubed x. Okay, right, what have we got? We've got a cos squared x, we've got a sine x, we've, we've got a sine cubed x over there, which we probably are going to want to get rid of. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm going to have to just go underneath here, but that's not a problem. Okay, let's see. We've got 3, we've got cos squared x, sine x, minus sine. Now what I'm going to do is let's, um, let's convert this and let's write it as sine squared x. We're trying to get the identity to look with a 4, a sine x cos squared x minus sine x. So we're wanting another. Okay, right. That th okay, so we're trying to introduce, we've got 3, we're wanting 4. Okay, so we're needing to try and get another one over here. Having taken the cos cubed x and having split it, okay, so you guys understand, instead of writing it as cos cubed x, I've written it as, sorry, sine cubed x, I've written it as sine x times sine squared x, okay? That introduces another identity, okay? And I hope at the moment you know exactly what it is. Think about it for a second. It's 3 cos squared x sine x. And I've got minus sine x. And have you got it? Do you know what the identity is? It's going to be 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, well done. Hope you got that. Okay, and what we're going to do, this is a nice complicated example, we're going to distribute our sign into the bracket. Okay, so 3 cos squared x, sine, squ sine x is staying as it is for now. We're going to distribute into the bracket, so therefore sine x multiplied by 1 is going to just stay sine x, and negative sine x times by negative cos squared x is going to be positive cos squared x sine x. Okay, right. And look what we've got. We have got another set of like terms. Okay, so what we've got is 3 cos squared x sine x plus another 1 cos squared x sine x, which gives us the 4 cos squared x sine x that we were looking for and minus sine x that we wanted. So yay, we got it that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, and that's going to be our last statement over there. Our left-hand side is equal to our right-hand side. Okay, right, lots to think about over there. So what I would really say is go back again and prove that example for yourself again. Okay, go through the steps it's like a puzzle. You've got to take one step and then you've got to look at another one and see how these pieces fit together. And if you can practice that and, and learn the skill of identifying which identities you need to substitute into your, into your proof, they're actually quite fun. Geometry, trig, it's all fun. You've just, just got to develop a feel for it. And that feel for it, I'm afraid, is only going to come with lots and lots of practice, which is what you're doing now, so we're all proud of you. But 
keep at it, okay. All right. Do we have time for another example, or are we going to? Take I think it we're going to take a little ad break okay, before we'll like their brains we'll explode, because <laughs> that is a lot of information. <laughs> okay, perfect. Right. So mindset is yes, please, 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 do not go anywhere, because we'll be right back after this break. See you soon.